I'm going to back up just a little bit to chapter 3, verse 21. Now all the people were baptized. It came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended and the bodily shaped like a dove upon him. And the voice from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. And then Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as he was supposed. And it goes on through the genealogy, all the way down through verse 38. And then we pick up in chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended afterward, he hungered. We do know this, if you fasted for a number of days and hunger departs and then returns, you are on the brink of starvation physically. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread, lust of the flesh. And Jesus answered, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, that proceed, uh, every word of God. And the devil taketh him up in the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, lust of the eyes. And the de- I'm, I'm, parap- I'm uh, common, giving commentary there. All right, that's not in the Bible. The lust of flesh, lust of eyes was not in the Bible. It was to show you what the temptations were. In a moment of time, the devil said, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If therefore wilt thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And, of course, you know, people say, Well, you know, the devil didn't do it. He was lying. No, no, no. The, the lie was not that he had the power of it. He had the power of it. He's called the God of this world. The lie was, If you worship me, I'll give it to you. That was the lie. Amen? I'll tell you something. If it's, if it's not real, then it's not a bona fide temptation. Amen? Glory to God. And Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship me. Brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, pride of life. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in their hands, and they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed him from a, for a season. And Jesus, remember in verse 1 it said he went full of, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region, round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all now notice that the, 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 the fame of him went out after he returned in the power so you can be full of the holy ghost and not turn it into power and god wants us to go from the place of being just being full to be full of power why well, so we can minister life amen and he came to nazareth where he'd been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath now you know what customs aren't bad we spend a lot of time knocking customs, but if they're biblical or they're godly and they're right, we should do them. There's nothing wrong with a custom. Our custom to come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Hello? Well, we don't want to be spiritual. We don't want to be camp bound up in man's custom. Well, Jesus had a custom. That's what the Bible said. Jesus had a custom. He went to the, he went to the tabernacle or the, t- the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And then took the, they took the scrolls and read. Can you say amen? He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the reading. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened it, he found the place where it was written. I'll tell you, you need to find some stuff about you. You need to find some stuff that the Bible says about you. Can you say amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You need to find where the Bible tells you that um, there are certain things about you and you start walking in the light of them. Amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. And he, so he began to read, The Spirit of the Lord's upon me, for because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of Jubilee. Closed the book, gave it to the minister, sat down, and all the eyes of them in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now, they're just looking at him. Hello. They're not too uptight. Until the next statement. Next statement got them all shook up. Hello? Elvis was singing way back then. All shook up. Mm-hmm. All right. He began to say, and then this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. All that bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. 
And they said, listen, I'll tell you something. You can hear something that sounds good, and immediately the devil's going to come. Remember, the Bible said, immediately he cometh to steal the word that was sown in their hearts. The parable of the sower. Amen. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, you shall surely say unto me, the proverb, physician, heal thyself. And um, we've heard uh, whatsoever you've heard in Capernaum, do thou here also. Uh, and, and he goes on and says a bunch of, I'm not going to read all that. Verse 28, and they in the synagogue which heard these things were filled with wrath. Now one minute they're th looking and listening about the gracious words. He makes a couple of some more statements and now they're filled with wrath. Well, they got offended. I'll tell you, offense is it will, will, will destroy you. Offense will cut you off from your supply. Offense will drive you into a place you don't need to be. Hello? Or you're not supposed to be. Hello? Take you out of what God's plan for your life was. Offense was a divider. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. And I, you know, I, you know the Bible, you know, uh, did you know the word will offend people who don't want to do it? And I refuse, I've refused all these years to compromise where that Dad Hagen, everyone thinks Dad Hagen was loved by everybody. Well, in the latter years of his ministry, you know, he, he, the, the people who got a hold of the truth and, and, and took a hold of it um, got so large, you didn't know about the naysayers. But back in his early ministry, people didn't, didn't like him all that much. There's a lot of people who didn't like him because he wouldn't compromise the word. He asked people in prayer lines, you know, you're going to be healed tonight with lay hands on him? I sure hope so. Well, you won't, and then he goes sit down. We do that today, people, people get, go get a shotgun and come back and shoot you. Because you were mean to them. See, you, un you understand there's no need in doing something if you're not going to do it the, the Bible way or God's way. If you're not going to do it in faith, there's just no need in exercising any activity in that direction. Amen. We have to understand that the anointing of God was upon Jesus, and Jesus said that, you know, the scriptures fulfilled in your ears. And you know, they went from listening to the gracious words. He said that you're, you're going to say, heal, your, uh, heal yourself, and what we heard of Capernaum, do here. And, um, you know, and, and uh, talk about Elijah and Elisha and uh, Naaman the prophet. And by the time he got done with that, they were all filled with wrath. And listen to what they did. Rose up, thrust him out of the city, led him to the brow of the hill whereon they were, the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were going to kill him. Well, I'll tell you what. Sound like some Christians I know. One minute, Pastor, I love you. We're behind you. We're, we're for you. We're all with you. Hallelujah. You're, you can't, nobody in this town preaches better than you do. Next week, you know, you, you, you're dirt. They're ready to kill you. Hello. It's true. You know, you changed my life. Next week, you messed up my life. Are you here? Well, see, we got, we've got to get back to just being doers of the word. Great peace have they that love thy law, for in they nothing shall offend them. What's that mean? If you're a doer of the word, living according to the word, you won't get offended over stuff. Stuff will come to offend you. You just, can't, you just take a hold of it and say, no, nope, I'm not going to be offended by that in Jesus' name. The word of God says such and such, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get offended by that. Amen. I'll tell you, offense will keep you sick. Offense will keep you down. Offense keep you defeated. Amen. Now, I ain't talking about offense on a football game. I'm talking about offense in the sense that you, you got upset with somebody because they did something you didn't like or didn't do it the way you wanted it done. Walk around with a chip on your shoulder and somebody's going to knock it off. Just, just honorary people out there. Just walk and knock it off just for the sake of being honorary. Hello? And there are people walking around with spiritual chips on their shoulders and they wonder why they're not getting healed and they wonder why things aren't going good for them. Well, let's get back to this not having, uh, uh, not being um, offended. Amen? Not easily offended, just not even offended. But passing, by, passing through the midst of them, he went his way. He came to Capernaum in the city of Galilee, taught them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So he had to go to another city. And he said, you're going to come back and say to me, do what you did to Capernaum and do it here. But I'll tell you what cut them out of the blessing was they got offended. Amen. We need to get stuff out of our lives so we can walk in the full blessing of the Lord. We need to keep stuff out of our life that keeps us out of, the he uh, out of healing, keeps us out of, of prosperity, keeps us out of blessing. Get rid of it. Don't, don't be going, gee, I sure wish God was doing here what he was doing over there. I wish he'd heal me like he healed so-and-so. 
Well, I'll tell you, sometimes you get stuff in your life that'll keep you from getting there. Well, if God was going to heal me, he'd do it anyway. Very interesting statement. Mark, the Bible says Jesus went and did some stuff, and, and it says here, he said he could there do no mighty work. So he laid his hand on a few. The King James says sick folk. The Greek says sickly. Minor ailments. Sickly folk would, and, and healed them. And he was, and he marveled. He marveled because of what? Their unbelief. Y'all hear you going home. See, I'll tell you what, you get, you get where you just, you, you begin to, um, well, quite frankly, you get, you get a spirit or a, um, a, a, a um, let's we'll go over to Mark. I'm, I'm, I'm on this line. Go to Mark 6. Verse 2, when he came to the Sabbath, they was coming, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many were hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence men will have this man these things, and the wisdom is, is this is given unto him, that even such mighty works are done by us. Now stop there. Man, they, they've heard about the mighty works. There's all kinds of uh, supernatural things happening, and they started to question, well, where did he get this from? Where did he get this power? Where did this wisdom come from? Even these mighty works being done by him. Look at the next verse and look at the, very, uh, the next thing that's said. Uh, well, after, and they say, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of J James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are these not his sisters with us? Stop. They moved out of seeing the anointing and began to see the man. And not even see the man, just see who his kinfolk, kinfolk were. Man, you look at my family, I'll tell you what, if you, go, you can find some kinfolk in my family, you probably think would disqualify me for ministry. But my kinfolk don't disqualify me for ministry. Hello? You know, I, I'm, I'm from a, a, a divorced family. And, uh, you know, and, I, and, and I'll tell you what, you, you start getting extra, extra crowds in there, you can find some crazy folk on anywhere, on in any side, in any, any lineage. You can have some crazy folk. Hello? Looney Tune people. Hello? You can have some blood kin folk that are crazy. Amen? You can have some not blood kin folk that are crazy. But you can't judge the ministry of the anointing by a person's relatives. Some of y'all got some relatives you probably want to, don't want to talk about, don't you? Do you want to talk about those folks you don't want to talk about? What is it, Jerry? You went, Lord, have mercy. He, he got some. Hallelujah. Now, here's what we do as believers. We love on them. We pray for them. We want to see them in heaven. Amen. We'll get the crazy cast out of them. Are you here? But that's, look what it says after they, they, they analyze who his mother and his brothers and his sisters were. The Bible says, and they were offended at him. Now, one minute, they're kind of marveling about the fact that he's doing mighty works, has great wisdom. You ever heard people say that? Well, you know, Pastor Ed's awesome. Yeah, I mean, he, he preaches awesome. I mean, he flows in the Holy Ghost. And then next thing out of their mouth is some, some judgment about uh, they're offended because of something. They get offended over something. Dinky little stupid thing. You know? Like that, that song. How uh, I many remember that old um, Southern gospel song, Excuses? Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. The devil will supply them if in church you'll stay away. People, the devil knows. Let's see here. Brother Bill, help me out there. I know you remember it. When folks begin to go to church, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses, and they begin, begin to list a bunch of excuses. You know, well, it's, he preaches too long, he preaches too short. Chairs are too hard, they're too soft. And then some old woman comes and goes, and he didn't even shake my hand. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See, you can get, see, you can get offended over stuff that's, that's, that's not worth being offended over. It'll keep you out of the blessing. Amen. Offense is a weight. We say, what's it got to do with healing service? I tell you what, if we get rid of some of the junk out of our lives, we'll get healed without even having to pray, be prayed for or pray, or pray about getting healed. Just simply because we got stuff out of the way that was cluttering up and, and clogging up the pipe. Amen. 
You ever, ever had a sewer line clogged up? You, they come out, they got, the rotor rooter comes out there, and he sticks the thing. And, you know, he didn't have to replace the sewer line. If you just got the stuff that was clogging it up out of the way, it would just flow. Our life can be like that sometimes. We just need a rotor rooter, a Holy Ghost rotor rooter session. Get the stuff out of the pipeline, amen? Let it flow. Amen? Let, just let the, let, the, let the water flow on out. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says, and they were offended at him. He said, a prophet's not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house. And he could there. It did not say he would not there. It said he could not there. He could there do no mighty work. Say so he laid his hands on a few sick folk. Like again, we said the Greek says a few sickly folk. And healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. What caused their unbelief? Offense. I said offense created unbelief in their life. Now, I know, I know this for a fact. I've, I've seen it happen. I remember uh, a number of years ago uh, when Dad was still with us. And that means pre-2003. He passed away t uh, September of 2003. So 10 years ago, Dad went home to be with the Lord. And... Um, so like that preacher only moved next door tonight. He was in here this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I, I'm teaching. I've got to teach on this. This is, not, this is teaching. So, all right. So if he keeps that up, I'm going to start preaching. Out doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Run with the best of them. Glory to God. Amen. But, um, you know, Brother Hagen, we, we, Dad, we call him Dad, um, he'd be praying for the sick. You know, he, he promised the Lord years earlier he'd never push himself beyond the point of exhaustion again. He had done it one time, and it, cost, it almost cost him his life because he, he pushed his body further than you should go. Well, I'd rather burn out. I mean, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather burn out than rust out. You don't have to do either. Some people think it's, think it's a sign of spirituality that you're going beyond what the human body can take. You know, Jesus withdrew and had rest. Jesus withdrew and, and prayed and recharged himself. Jesus got away. Remember when, when John the Baptist was beheaded, he went, he went into a place that, just to recover. From, the, from what had happened there, and the crowds followed him. See, you, you know, but he, he, would take, he would steal time away to recover. Now, I know that he went out and began to minister to the people and, and heal the sick and cast out devils, but, you know, uh, we find several times in the Bible that Jesus withdrew himself to recover, to, to pray, to refresh himself. He told the disciples one time, get in the boat and go on, I'll meet you on the other side. He came over in the middle of the night and, you know, and had that whole walk on the water thing deal. What was he doing? He was getting alone. He's getting by himself. He's getting recovery time. So your body needs recovery time. So a lot of times we want the Lord to heal us, and what we need is go, go take a nap. I need me a mini choir up here, the bobblehead choir. I need, I need a group of little shelves of bobbleheads. We can hit a little vibrating button, it vibrate, and they all start shaking and play some choir song and call them the bobbleheads. All right. That's a really cool idea. I think that's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Let them all bobble here for me. Yeah, that's pastor's right. The problem with that is everybody be looking at them all the time and never look at me preach anymore. Maybe we can do it and put it on the big screen or something. All right. Just being silly now. But, but that, I know mean, I, I had to, I, had to, I got on that bobble here thing. I kind of lost my track. Here we go. Now, so, <clears throat> he'd be ministering to the sick. He'd be praying for the sick. And he, he would sometimes he'd just stop and say, and he'd turn around and, and ask a couple of different, you know, the, usually it's a, mainly the same two most of the time. He, he'd call a couple of the rainbow singers of band down and say, and, and stretch out your hands. He'd take his finger and put it in their hands and say, now you go pray for him. He went and sat down. And I've, I've seen people turn around and get out of the line. Now, they, what happened? They got offended that Dad Hagen, prophet of God, wasn't going to lay hands on them, that some little nobody singer was going to do it. What they didn't understand was when he laid his hands on their hands, he was transferring the anointing. It was the anointing that breaks the yoke, not the man. I've watched them do it more than once. What happened? They just simply got offended at the person who was going to be ministering to them and not recognizing that it's the anointing that does the ministry. You go here, you go home. So we, we, can't af we can't afford offense. We just have to walk in the realm of the Spirit. We have to walk in the light as He's in the light. Amen? 
let the anointing work through our lives and let the anointing flow through others into us as, 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 as necessary or needed. And uh, so it says that he could there do no mighty work. So he laid his hand on a few sick or sickly folk and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. He went around about their villages teaching. Well, what, what? The only way to fix unbelief is to teach it out. Or pre teach or preach it out. You, know, you, can pre you can preach faith. Amen. I say, like, the people who don't like preaching, you're wrong. People who don't like teaching, you're wrong. Jesus went around about the villages preaching in the synagogues, teaching the gospel, I mean, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness. He did both. He taught and preached. Amen. Well, I, don't, I think preachers are just, just full of hot air. Well, teachers are wordy. So, how, I mean, we could just go back and forth with this. You know what I'm saying? They just like to hear themselves talk. Well, we could just kind of go after them. And I, and I do both, so I, I'm, I'm in there, praise God. I'm, I'm talking about myself on both sides. Now, you do know I'd rather preach than anything. That's, my, that's, that's what I love. Hallelujah. But I want, we want to get the truth across to people, whether it's, a, whether it's a, a preaching sermon or a teaching message. We want to get the truth across to people and get them walking in the light. So, you, you know, we're going to have to get rid of offense. Now, see, we're going to walk in the light, be in the light. We're going to get rid of offense. We're going to walk in help and healing because we're not going to be offended. And we're going to be able to receive from the Lord. Can, I say, can you say, I want to receive from the Lord? So I'm not going to be offended. Amen. Amen. Now, you might have people in the church, people you know that, that are offended. They talk to you, and they whisper in your ear. Now, they, now they, they can be real slick. I've, I'll never say anything about Pastor Ed. Yeah, but the implication is you're, saying, you're thinking something. Or, you know, well, you know, um, it's, it's a personal thing, and I'm not, I'm not going there anymore. It's a personal thing, and, uh, and uh, but you'll never hear me say anything bad about it. Yeah, but you're thinking it. You know, your, your actions show where you are. Walking in offense, hello. Well, I've had, I've had people get offended with me and, and over the years, and you, and you think, well, what in the world are you offended about? All they ever do is preach the word. When you came to me, I told you the truth. I mean, I used to have one guy over here years ago, and, and I'll tell you why he didn't like me, because I told his, his girlfriend that he wanted to shack up with. I was always trying to get her in bed. Hello. Amen. And I just, I, you know, and, I, and I, I just flat out told him, you need to stop doing it. Her, I said, you need to stop doing this and, li and live right for the Lord. Well, he didn't like that. And so he got offended. And he, he'd go out and say, I'll tell you. He'd see people from the church. I'll tell you that, Ed Taylor, this and that. And you know, oh, what did he do? He told you to stop sleeping with her. See, the truth will bring up offense. The people who don't want to walk in the light of it. Never did, never did anything to him except tell him he couldn't, he couldn't keep having sex outside of marriage with somebody in the church. And it wasn't right. You need to stop living that way. Got mad, got offended. And then every time he saw somebody from the church, he just started running me down about how I, I was this or I was that. I had somebody one time, I don't, I don't know, I'm just going, hey, maybe some of these folks are watching. I need to get some stuff straight. Had, had somebody in the church one time, and, and, and one of their family members was on the platform. Well, come to find out, they came to me and said, we, we got to talk to you, we got to talk to you, we got to talk to you. Okay, okay. Now, you can't tell, now, I'm going to tell you, something. don't ever come to me this way again. I'm going to tell you, don't ever come, I won't do it. Don't come to me and tell me that somebody in my family is doing such and such because you can't say anything about it. Then don't tell me. Just let the Holy Ghost tell me and I'll deal with it by the Holy Ghost. All right? So went out in some, some lake somewhere in the middle of the night with wine coolers. They were singing on the platform with his brother-in-law. And they strip down butt naked and start, you know, and, and, and they start having, you know, semi-homosexual activity. Well, how do you mean semi? Well, I don't, I don't know how far they went, but anyway, are you here? Smoking and drinking and, and, and laying out nude by the moonlight. Boy, and it added a whole new thought to dancing in the moonlight by whoever that group was. <laughs> I remember who that group was. Dancing in the moonlight. Huh? The temptations dancing in the moonlight? It all. <laughs> the temptations. <laughs> yeah. 
Come to me and give me all that information. Well, the, the, the mother and the wife both came to me, and the mother was upset because the, the guy she, he was laying out there with was her, was her son. Trying to take him into that, that lifestyle. Man, man. So I called him in and said, we got to talk. Never, never said a word about that. But, you know, I said, well, there's something, what's going on? Yeah, well, he confessed to drinking and smoking. I said, well, you know, you can't, we, you, we say you can't be on the platform. You're drinking and smoking. Now, here's, here's what I said. We want to restore you. We want to help you get, we want to help you overcome. But you can't do it from the, you can't be in a, in a place where you're ministering from the platform in that way and, and be doing that activity. You just can't do it. Okay? All right. So, steps down. Well, it ain't long quits coming to the church. Now, listen, I, we want to restore you. You want to stop coming to the church. They're mad at me. Well, I want the one out there in the moonlight. Okay? Well, then the wife and the mother-in-law leave. And they go out and start telling everybody, all he wanted to do is get him off that platform. Why did you come to me in the first place? Hello? He didn't care about him. I did. But you, you know, it won't just the smoking and the drinking that was real. I mean, the real thing was the moonlight stuff. Hello? Are you here? But they got all of it. I mean, they went to another church, and now I'm this and I'm that, and, you know, and, and all this kind of. I'm t all I did was say what the truth was. You can't do that. You get offended at me. People do that all they get offended. Hello? You didn't call them enough times. They got offended. You know, it's time to put, take off your diaper and put your bottle down. Hello? And grow up. Amen. Are you here? I do not have Jessie in a bassinet beside my bed now, laying on her tummy with my hand on her back all night long. I did do that when she was a baby. But she's 27 now. I don't do that anymore. She grew up. It's time to grow up. But people get offended over stuff. I, I mean, I've had people just, you, you think, what did, what did you get offended for? Well, the, the, mom and the, the mom and the wife were the ones that came to me in the first place to tell me what was going on. And then when I dealt with it, they got mad. And you think, my God, what's wrong with you? Hello, you're, you're about to bust a, bust a seam of the fact of what was taking place. I deal with it and, and then, then offer the opportunity for restoration and, and, to bring, and, and to bring you back into the place where you should be with the Lord and everybody gets mad and leaves and, and blames me. That's how offense works. Offense always projects the guilt, the, the cause of the guilt in their life somewhere else. They get offended because they're projecting guilt the guilt that they're feeling. Cause, now listen. I mean, it's one thing if I walk up and tell you you're ugly. Hello. All right. Then, then I'm, I'm not justly, you know, you're not, off, you're not offended or you're not being treated right by that. <coughs> but you're mad because I did, did what the word said to you. <coughs> Amen. You can't, you can't live that way. It'll rob you of faith. And changing scenery doesn't fix that. I can tell when I see somebody that used to go to our church where they stand and they were thinking of me just as soon as I get around them. I mean, you can feel it. Oh, man, I was uh, here. That particular woman, about two months ago, I went somewhere, and we ran to somebody that used to go to church. Now, somebody came to our church one time because their daughter was coming here. They're trying to get them back to serve the Lord, and they had been to our church before. And they, 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 only, they came over here from another church to kind of get their, a family member serving God again. And they did, then they kind of fell away, so they went back to the church they'd come out of. I don't care. You know, they, they, they had a mission in, their, in the coming here. They weren't really, they weren't committed here from the beginning. And in that sense, they wanted to try to help get that family member serving the Lord. And uh, so when, when that kind of fell apart and the, their, their family member went back to the world and stuff. They went back to the, where they had all the relationships and where they felt like they belonged. And I understood that. They came and told us, we, look, we understand. That's not a big deal. But, you see, same church where this other person goes now. 
And uh, something had gone on, and I walked into a, a rest, restaurant after church service one night, and the one person who used to come there, they just they, and they just love on us. They just say, look, we love you. We, you know, we, every time they see us, it's just love, love, love. But that other person was there, and I could feel it. I knew there had been some of this going on recently. You could tell. You could tell. You could tell. Because I had seen them a few months ago, and they weren't too bad. They weren't like that. But something's gone on since then. And they, I could, it, was written, it was like written all over their forehead. Yeah, you know, they started talking about some stuff to some other offended people, and they got offended. They got that offense brought back up. You can't afford that. I'm not worth it. I'm not worth dying early. And I'm not worth you being sick. So why don't you just get over it and go on with the Lord? Stop being offended. Amen. I'm not offended. Really? I'll tell you, we had somebody leave our church in the past, not that many years ago. You know why they left? Because I started preaching about not walking in love with people in the church. You're sitting on one side, they're sitting on the other. You can't walk in love. They got mad. They got mad. Because they had somebody in church they couldn't even, they couldn't even stand to be in within a 10-foot perimeter of. And I'm not going, I can't have that. So I started preaching about walking in love. I started saying, you can't, how can you sit here and take the Lord's table and be mad at somebody sitting on the other side of the church? How can you do that? They got mad. Came up with some excuse. Finally built up to where, you know, they weren't coming hardly at all until, you know, 15 minutes into the service and after worship was over because it was too loud. And, and now where they go to church, it's so loud you've got to have earplugs. But ours was too loud. No, it was offense. 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 Because they had, a, they had somebody sitting on this side of the church, and they'd sit on this side of the church, and, and they couldn't get them, you know, they, they were mad. See, that's, that's not God. I said, that's not God. How can you come in here and say, I love the Lord, and God's speaking to you every, every 20 seconds, giving you revelation, and te- telling, you, telling you everything about the direction of life, and you can't even walk in love with somebody that, in, in, in the building? How can you say, I love God and hate your brother? What is that? That's offense. I'm not sure why I'm all over here, but, you know, they're not in here, but I'm telling you, I'm trying to help you. It'll rob you. I said it'll rob you. Run off to another building. Woo, I'm free. Uh, Have you dealt with that other stuff? Then you're not free. You just change locations. You just don't have to look at it anymore. Hello, I don't have to deal with it because I don't have to look at it. We'll see how free you are. Let's bring you in, sit you down in the same room. Let's talk. Let's see how free you are. What's this got to do with healing? A lot. It's got a lot to do with it. You holding that kind of offense, it'll rob you. Oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm now, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm going to do supposition. I've gone to another place and now I'm in leadership and I don't feel any of that anger. It's just because you're not around them. The catalyst isn't there anymore. Hello? Can y'all bobblehead over here for me? All right. Amen. He didn't shake my hand. He didn't let me do this. He didn't let me do it that way. I want to do it this way. And he, listen, folks, do you know, I, I don't really see anywhere in the Bible where they told Jesus how to run his ministry. Did y'all see that anywhere? You can't get offended because Pastor Ed doesn't run it the way you wanted it run. You're going to have to walk, we're going to have to grow up. And as a believer, if you want to walk healthy and whole, you can't afford that mess. Somebody say amen. All right, so I'm, I'm going to stop there because they got offended at him. He had to teach the word. He had to teach out their offense. He had to teach them out of their offense. Only way to fix it. That offense in them kept them out of the things of God. Amen? Or not so be it, but isn't that the truth? Yeah, that's the truth. Ain't that the truth? Preach, Pastor. All right. Glory to God. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna walk free from offense. I'll walk free from offense. Hallelujah. I've seen, we, listen, a number of years ago we had, uh, well, it's been a right good while now, a number of years ago. Probably going on 20 years. Church is doing really, really good, growing, going some places. And, and, and some people 
a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing got into our congregation. He just flat out was a wolf in sheep's clothing. I, you know, I could, I could tell you stories about this particular, quote, minister and his relationship with other churches as a traveling minister. He split three other churches as a traveling minister, calling the people in the congregation cause, because he was sent, because pastors abused the sheep, and God sent him to heal them up. And they, he'd make relationships with people in people's churches that he'd gone and preached, and they didn't even know it. And he's making phone calls to them, messing the churches up, getting them to support his ministry. Well, he got into our church. You know, we, he lived here. We didn't, we didn't. And there were some things going on. We got, and got, and got to getting this, this situation going on. Now, let me say this. As a pastor, if you have a family member and they're a member of another church, I'm not going to go visit your family member unless they ask me to come, number one. I will. But I'm not just going to start showing up and visiting your family member. That's, that's, that min the ministerially, that's wrong. They've got a pastor. They've got a shepherd. That's not my job to go take care of them. Matter of fact, it's wrong. I wouldn't like it if I went to the hospital and say, you just, you don't, you know, just wrong for you. No, no, no. I'm a, my, you're, my, you're a part of my flock. You know? If you want me to come, I'll go. I'll be glad to go. Pastor Ed, my, my mama said that she wants me to come see her. I'll go see her. Now, just because you want me to go see her, I'm not going to go see them unless they want me to come see them. Why? It won't do any good if they don't want me to come. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would be useless for me to go if they don't want me there. Done that too. Been in the room that went because somebody asked you to go, so you went to visit them, and they're trying, they're trying to look at the world as the world turns and the edge of night. Right? The whole time, if you move one way, they moved the head the other and kept going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Never stopped looking at the television the whole time. I'm not even sure they close their eyes when we pray for them. Are you here? Y'all got to see on the other side, side next time. They're getting, they're getting double tracking over there. It's an eight track night. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, uh, somehow or another, this guy started going up to the hospital, visiting with the daughter, who's a member of our church, and sitting with her. And then all of a sudden, they had about half the church up there. And they were all going up there to support her because I wasn't coming up there to support her. Oh, I checked on her, asked her how she was doing, asked her how her dad was doing. Uh, she said, would you come visit? I said, if he wants me to come, I'll come. He never asked for me to come. Never. I said, you ask him if, if he wants me to come, and if he says he wants me to come, I'll be glad to go visit with him. Never. Well, what's that mean? It's, it's not even worth the visit if, he, if he's not going to want you there because he's not going to listen to you. Isn't that right? And so... But he got in and got that thing going and got, and got people stirred up and caused an offense in the congregation and split the church up. I mean, tore it up. Tore it up. All because people started getting, getting, getting involved. In, and listen, I'll tell you something else. Don't get involved in somebody else's offense. If somebody else is offended, stay out of their offense. Pray for them that they'll get it straight. As a matter of fact, tell them you need to get that straight. Yeah, but, but, but don't, don't even sound like a motorboat around me. You need to get that straight. Don't be put putting around me about how that you got a right to feel that way. Well, the Lord showed me. The Lord ain't showed you nothing except, you know, if you got, if you got offense against one, go get it straight before you come up here and show me anything. Don't be coming worshiping me and then telling me that, you know, that, that you're offended. You can walk out of here and walk offended to somebody. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, anyway, praise the Lord. We just got, got all excited over all that, didn't we? Y'all sound excited. But the matter of the fact is, if we, if we don't keep offense out of our life, so these people got offended. Now, one of them's dead. I'm talking about somebody we got turned, got out of, I got out of drugs and everything, got turned on. You know, people who, they, they got involved and got all that offense to those, that couple, messed up their marriage and split them all up. One of them's dead from drugs. The other one's back out in the world living for the devil. All kinds of stuff happened to those people. Why? Well, because of offense. I said, it's, it's a dangerous thing. It's, it's a dangerous thing. This is a dangerous thing. So you get rid of offense. You keep it out of your life. And I don't mean no Mickey Mouse, I'm, I'm all right. You know, I've gotten that straight. If you can't be around somebody without getting offended, then you're not free from it. You're still offended. 
if the mention of their name causes your blood pressure to go up so high, you like one of them animated cartoon characters where steam's coming out your ear, you're not free. If you get the shakes and you get twitches, like, you know, uh, like Chief Inspector, um, what is it, Dreyfus. When, when, when you mention Clouseau, Dreyfus starts twitching. <laughs> then you're not free. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. All righty. Praise God.